So, Jesus, fully confirmed in what he's about to do, also comes once again face to face with the way in which evil is going to try to prevent him from doing that. He knows eventually he's going to have to sacrifice himself for the kingdom of God, but he knows that time is not yet. So, he escapes back up into the Galilee, doesn't even stay in his hometown of Nazareth, as we just heard, moves to a different town of Capernaum to kind of get the Romans off his track. But he doesn't hide there. He more and more continues to preach about the coming reign of God and to invite people to become part of it, invite people to allow their lives to grow in that kind of love, that kind of goodness, that kind of honesty, that openness to justice that will bring the, the kingdom about. But as he does that, he realizes he can't do it on his own. He needs support, he needs help. He isn't going to look towards the high priests down in Jerusalem. He looks towards the ordinary folks, people who lived along the seashore just as we do. So he goes to the fisher folk and he calls them and they follow him. And now they continue to go around proclaiming this new reign of God. So what does that mean for us? After the long introduction I gave to it, I can't give a long homily as to what it means, but I would just raise four points, not my usual three, but four. One, we are all baptized. Now, no one of us, as little babies when we were baptized, heard a voice come down from heaven. At least no one of our parents ever told us that that, that happened. But we are still called God's beloved son, God's beloved daughter, through that baptism. And in that baptism, are called to work with Jesus in bringing about a world of justice, of peace, of goodness, of love. Second point, just as with Jesus, there will always be opposition to that. You've experienced that in your own lives. Times of you really try to do the right thing and it's come back and hit you in the face. Times when you try to be a person of honesty, of goodness, and have had to pay a price for that. But the story doesn't end there. The third point is that ultimately God has the victory over evil. Jesus himself gave his life completely but rose from the dead. And you and I seeking to do what is right, seeking to bring about the kingdom, are given the gift of the promise of the Holy Spirit that ultimately, even when we find ourselves overcome from without or even from within by that reality of evil, can grow beyond it, can grow through it, can grow into a deeper, richer, more loving life. And the fourth point is that just like Jesus, so for us, we need one another's help in doing that. We need people in our lives, our spouses, our friends, the community of faith who we worship here. People who will help us as we struggle together to bring about the reign of God, the reign of goodness, the reign of peace. So we gather here as we do each week at the Lord's table to be strengthened by his body and blood to be strengthened by the victory of his cross, so that even in the face of everything that negativity and evil can throw at us, we know we will continue to grow in love as we work in his spirit to bring about the kingdom of God.